I hope you all are fine with the grace of Almighty Allah. So, <clears throat> welcome to Scaling Network class. And uh, I will record all the videos of Scaling Network, all chapter videos, okay, one by one. So, maybe every week you will get each chapter videos. So, inshallah, within uh, eight weeks we will finish uh, all the videos recording. And inshallah, I will share with you all people. Okay. So chapter number one is regarding a uh, land designing. So it's a uh, CCNA routing and switching curriculum scaling network version six, and we are discussing about the land designing. So in the land designing, if you are familiar with this one, in this chapter, I will discuss about the campus wide land design. Explain why it is important to design a scalable hierarchical network network so why we need the hierarchical network why not the other what is the why it is so much important so definitely our concept should be clear so why this network design is important hierarchical network design is important and why we need it so we will also describe the hierarchical small business network design and i will also explain you uh, how to consider for designing a what they need to be considered for designing a scalable network. So after that, we will see how the campus network device, how if you are if you are going to design a campus network, what devices and which type of devices you need to select. Okay. So selecting a network device is based on the feature compatibility and the network requirement. So we should be more careful about which device we are going to select and what is the capability and what are the feature it is going to be provided okay so this is very important so in this chapter i will discuss one by one so inshallah at the end of the chapter you will your all ambiguities and the concept will be clear so now we will discuss first thing campus wide land design the first topic so why we need to uh, why we need a scalable scale the why we need to scale the network this is the very first question can anyone can give me the answer can you write your comments uh, in the video section below can you tell me why we need to scale the network why we need to expand the network if we, if, if i will say in the very uh, rough language so why we need to scale the network why we need to expand the network as you know business increasing increasingly rely on their network infrastructure in order to provide a mission critical services as a business grow and evolve they hire more employee and open more branch offices because of that one they need to expand into a global market so these changes directly affect the requirement of the network if you will not meet the requirement of the network how you can expand into the global market because now your empire employee has been grown you have employee uh, mean you hire a more employee and you open more branch offices around the world so definitely you need to expand your network so in order to expand your network so all network enterprise must support the exchange of the various type of network traffic so definitely in your network you have a converged network network traffic like you are not only relying on the data network so maybe there can be uh, voice traffic video traffic video data voice data and so on and so forth it will support a mission critical application because you are dealing with a business uh, applications maybe sometime you have a financial uh, uh, financial type of support you are providing it means it is a mission critical services type of thing in the real time of real type real uh, real type of activities or uh, real time applications are running in your network infrastructure then definitely your network should support um support a critical applications so so it can also provide a centralized administrative control so these are the things must support your network 
and uh, the LAN is the networking infrastructure that provides access to the network resources for end user over a single floor or the building. See, this is your network. See, this is your LAN network and it will provide services to the end user. Okay. So, now the concept is clear. Why we need a scalable network? Please try to understand this concept. Now, we will go to the next hierarchical network design. So, why we need the hierarchical network design? Everyone is talking about the hierarchical network design. See, the campus wide LAN uses a hierarchical design model to break the design up into a modular layer. These are the modular layer. You have access layer, distribution layer, and the core layer. Okay. So each layer have a different functionality. Why we divide into a layer? Because it allow each layer to implement a specific function. So every layer have a different functions and different features and different responsibility. So, which simplify the network designer for easier deployment and management. So, because of that one, we are going to divide into a different layer. Access layer, distribution layer and the core layer. Okay. Now, we have these three, three layer architecture we call it access layer and distribution layer so if you will if you are talking about the access layer access layer provide end point and the user direct access to the network so this is your access layer you can see all your end devices are connected with your access layer then you have a distribution layer distribution layer aggregate access layer and provide connectivity connectivity to the services so this is your distribution layer. You can see here, this is the distribution layer. And finally, we come the core layer. The core layer provide a connectivity between the distribution layer and the distribution layer for the large environment to ISP, to the internet. You can see this is a core layer. This is a backbone. So this is provide uh, the connectivity between distribution layer and to the internet. Okay. So this, this is the basic function of the core layer. Now, some smaller enterprise network implement two, two type hierarchical design we call the collapse layer architecture or two type architecture, collapse layer. So, it means the core and distributions are collapsed together. Collapse the core and distribution layer into a one layer. Okay. So, we have in the collapse core tile architecture we have access layer and just a core layer we will say so that is called collapse core or two tile architecture okay now go to the next slide if you are talking about designing for the scalability okay so designing for the scalability to support a large medium or small network the network designer must develop a strategy to enable the network to be available and scalable effectively and easily. So you need to design a scalable network that should be available and scalable easily. So how it can be scalable and available easily? So, so you need to use a modular equipment. Equipment. Okay. So the modular equipment means so the suppose if you are working if if you have a modular switch modular switch means you can add the modules in it you can add more port more module suppose you have a router so I will show you the router if uh, I will log in here let me check okay so let me check it here yeah so I will show you you can see here this is a router if I will go to the router I will show you. Uh, any of the router here so this router have this uh, just let me zoom in you can see here so if you need some module you can add the module here so just off and you can add some more module suppose you need HVAC okay if you need it you can add this one so if you need this module you can add it if you need some ban so you can add some ban module you can see so this is called the modular 
uh, router okay now we'll go back to this one so this is a modular type of design if the need arise you can expand the number of port if need arise you can expand the serial link and if the need arise you can add more devices in your network it means expandable okay so design a hierarchical network to include a module that can add upgrade and modify as needed so you have uh, a scalable ipv4 ipv6 starting uh, address strategy that is in the hierarchical network design so you should have some reserve addresses so if you need to expand so you should have a num enough number of ip addresses to sign to the devices or to the end user so choose a router or multi layer switch to limit the broadcast domain and filter undesirable traffic from the network and implement a redundant link so definitely you need to implement a redundant link between the critical devices and between access and the core layer i will discuss about this redundant link okay now this is the planning a redundant link now come to the redundant link so what is a redundant link why we need a redundant link can can you tell me why we need a redundant link in our network infrastructure because we need a redundant link in order to minimize the possibility of single point of failure by recognizing these fact what you need to do if you need to minimize the possibility of single point of failure okay so first you need to install a duplicate equipment here see one switch this line of line of switches are enough okay but what will happen if this link will be down then you are not able to connect with your server so because of that one in the if you are planning a redundant devices or redundant link so you add these switches at least if 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 this link will be down still there is a possibility to access the server or services did you get me so you always need I, i will just show you here so suppose this is your router or if i will add some more switches so you can so you can add some switches here and uh, see here and uh, what will happen suppose if the link let me okay see here if the link will be down from this one to this one what will happen still there is a possibility to connect with your router or some of the services you are providing and i will just show you suppose this is the one i will just show you see here okay in this case i'm just making a simple if suppose this link will down what will happen still the data can be transmitted through this link did you get me if this link will be down still there is a possibility to re to go outside of this network so that is why we need a redundant devices and redundant link so that is why just one minute so that is why we uh, we are adding a redundant link and redundant devices okay so redundant path offer a alternative physical path for the data to traverse the network and spanning tree protocol is required with the redundant path in a switch ethernet network to prevent the layer to lose so see here stp provide a mechanism for disabling a redundant path in a switch network until the path is necessary such as when the failure occur so when the failure will occur then so uh, uh, what the S uh, spanning tree inshallah we will discuss in detail in chapter number 3 so what is spanning tree it will prevent a layer to loop suppose if the data is going in this way so it should not come back to switch number 1 so mean how to prevent the loop so we will discuss in detail 
uh, in chapter number three. Okay, it's a full chapter spanning tree. So we will discuss. So planning a redundancy. So you need to be careful about spanning tree. You need to be careful about the redundant path. So you need to add a redundant path. Mean duplicate path. Redundant mean duplicate. So you need to install a duplicate equipment. Okay. So these are the uh, the things you need to consider while planning a redundancy in your network. Okay. The failure domain. So the failure domain. What is the failure domain? The failure domain is the area of the network that impacted when the critical device or the network services experience a problem. So if you will see this example, so we need to minimize the failure domain. Okay, how we can minimize the failure domain? If suppose if this IP will stop working, what will happen? Only the connected end devices with the IP will be affected. Okay. So it means we minimize the failure domain. If this switch will be affected, if this switch is not working, if this is corrupted, so what will happen? These all end devices or we can say these all devices will not able to communicate with the outside world. Okay. So here the, the failure domain is little bit large. But if you are if we are talking about the AP uh, this access point, the failure domain we are making a small and small failure domain. Okay. Now come to this switch, switch number three. Our failure domain. What will be the failure domain of switch number three? It means if this will if this will be affected. So how many other end devices will get affected? So these only two because of the smaller failure domain. Okay, so smaller failure domain reduce the impact of the failure, but also make a troubleshooting easier. Okay, how it will make a troubleshooting easier as we discuss. Okay, if this is a problem, suppose if these computers are not working, we will not go to switch number two. We will directly go to the switch number three, and we will see where is the issue. What is the issue? So we can easily troubleshoot this problem. So we don't need to. Go to switch to router and because we need to eliminate because the problem with these uh, these end devices not with this one okay so it's easier to troubleshoot okay so failure domain it is almost the same concept now uh, increasing bandwidth what is this the ether channel what is a what is the ether channel Ether channel, it means you are aggregating a multiple link together. You are going to add two or more than two links together. Sometimes you need to expand the bandwidth of the link. Suppose this link, okay. So how you can expand the bandwidth of the link? You need to add a Ether channel protocol, okay. So if a multiple link can work into a single link, it is possible for the link to become a bottleneck. So Ether channel is the form of link aggregation that will allow the network administrator to increase the amount of bandwidth between the devices by increasing one logical link out of several physical links. So I will just show you if you will come to this uh, uh, packet tracer activity, if, if we this is a suppose 100 Mbps, this link is 100 Mbps. Okay, if we need to increase the, the bandwidth, the link speed between these two switches, what I need to do, I need to add one more link and so I need to add one more link I will just show you let me organize a little bit and see I will just let me what I will do I will aggregate these two link together it means 100 mbps and 100 mbps it become 200 Mbps. It means now we can send 200 Mbps of data on this link with the help of Ether channel because we combine both links together and it works as a single, as a one link. So that one link has a speed of 200 Mbps now. Okay. It now the speed of these 
this link is 200 mbps because we combine together it means we aggregate together okay so how we aggregate this link together with the help of ether channel so inshallah in the next coming chapter we will do a practical how we can aggregate the link together okay now so now expanding the access layer if you are going to expand the access layer so wireless connectivity is the important aspect of extending access layer connectivity so the network must be designed to be able to expand the network access to the individual and and devices as needed so if you have the wireless you can easily the wireless access point you can easily expand the access layer so wireless access point is a means uh, is a, we, we can say is one of the one of the easiest way you can to expand the access layer of your uh, for the end user okay so uh, what uh, what the uh, uh, what the end devices require so they require a wireless nic in order to connect uh, with the wireless access point okay if you have a laptop again there is uh, i think it has the built in nic wireless nic but if you have uh, the pc or the desktop yes you need to install uh, the wireless uh, NIC in, uh, incorporate with this uh, the, with the in order to connect with the wireless access point. Okay. Now selecting a network devices. If you are going to select the network devices, what factor you need to consider? So selecting a proper hardware to meet the current network requirement is critical when designing a network. So there are five categories of the switches for enterprise network. We have the campus LAN switches, cloud managed switches, data center switches, service provider switches, and virtual networking. So we will focus on the campus LAN switches because we are not going for the cloud, data center, and the service provider. Okay. So various factors to be considered when selecting a switch, including you need you have a fixed versus modular configuration. I mean the fixed switches or modular configuration switches stackable non stackable and port density so all these things we need to thickness of the switch rack cost port density power reliability we will discuss one by one what is fixed and modular configuration okay so first we can discuss about the port density as we already discussed about the okay suppose fixed and modular configuration stackable versus non stackable so what I will do, okay, we will discuss one by one, okay, that we discuss first the port density. The port density of the switch refer to a number of port on a single switch. So what is the port density? Number of port in a single switch. If I ask you, so what is the port density of this switch? Suppose this is the switch. What is the port density here? What is the port density of this switch? What is the port density of this switch? If I give you this scenario, so what is the port density of this switch? The port density, can you count? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 12. And this is 12. So total how many ports you have? 24. Plus these two ports. 24 plus 2, 26. So what is the port density? Port density number of. So what is the port density? In this case, 26 because you have total number of port is 26 so the port density of the switch refer to the number of port on a single switch fixed configuration switches support the variety of port density configuration cisco catalyst switches like 3850 24 port and 48 port the 48 port switch can the option for the four additional port for the pluggable spf devices yes and the modular catalyst 6500 being on the core layer distribution layer mostly there it is it is being used 6500 mostly it is being used on the for the enterprise network or the for the isp they are using 6500 switches so support over 1000 switch port so this is your 6500 modular switch it can support 1000 port Modular switches are usually more appropriate in the large network in order to reduce the space and the power issue. Okay, 
Now forwarding rate. What is forward forwarding rate? Switch product lines are classified by, by, by the forwarding rate. So the forwarding rate define the processing capability of a switch by rating how much data the switch can process per second. So each port, it doesn't mean you can add more number of port and uh, it is a good enough, but the thing is, does the switch have the capability to process this number of port data? This is very important. So entry level switches have lower forwarding rate than the enterprise level switches, of course. And forwarding rates are important factor when selecting a switch because if the rate is too low, it will not able to support a full wire speed communication across all of the its switch port. So access layer switches typically do not need to appropriate a full wire speed because they are physically limited by their uplink to the distribution layer. Okay, so high performance switches need needed at the distribution and the core layer. So this is the forwarding rate. What is forwarding rate? Again, I'm telling you how much data the switch can process per second is called forwarding rate. So if we have 24 ports, suppose 24 port fast ethernet switches and each port have 10 Mbps of traffic. So how much, what will be the forwarding rate of 24 port of uh, 24 port switch speed having uh, 10 Mbps? If I ask you, so what will be the speed? Again, I'm just going to write in the notepad and please try to understand. So suppose you have 24 port switch. Okay, 24 port switch. And this 24 port switch, it is fast ethernet, suppose fast ethernet, FA, fast ethernet and it can support 10 MVPS of data. Each port, each fast Ethernet port, suppose, each, each fast Ethernet port uh, have 10 MVP, can, can support up to 10 MVPS, suppose 10 MVPS of data. So, what will be the forwarding rate? So, what will be the forwarding rate? What will be the forwarding rate? What will be the forwarding rate? Can you tell me this one? Please, before next lecture, you need to tell me what will be the forwarding rate if it is a 24 port switch and each port maximum can send 10 Mbps of data, what will be the forwarding rate? This is a quiz, so you need to answer the comment below or before the next lecture, you can send me your comments, okay? So, now go to the next slide. So power over ether. What is a power over ether? So it means if you are going to eliminate the need for the power cable to the network devices, especially IP4 wireless access point, in that case you need PoE switch. Okay. So the PoE switch will provide the power to these end devices over the ethernet cable okay so this poe definitely it has a cost and uh, definitely uh, you need to pay the cost because uh, this uh, this is the ip phone so ip phone does not require the power adapter because it will get the power from through this ethernet cable so how it will get because this switch have poe port okay this switch have the poe port because it is connected with the PoE power over ether. So it will get the power, this IP will get the power, sorry, this IP phone will get the power through this port, okay. The same like you have, you, if you have the access point, wireless access point. Suppose if you are installing the wireless access point in the floor somewhere and it is difficult to get the power extension there, okay. So what you can do, you can better to use the PoE port and it will get the power through this port okay so that is why it is called power over ether okay so now we can move to the next slide multi-layer switch multi-layer switches are typically deployed in a core and distribution layer 
so multi layer switches can do the following build a routing table and support routing protocol how it can support the routing protocol we just you need to enable ip routing in this one in the uh, in multi layer switch it will support the routing as well okay so forwarding ip packet at the layer closest to a layer layer 2 forwarding it will also act on the layer it will work on layer 2 and layer 3 so multi layer switch often support the specialized hardware called application specific integrated circuit asics what is asics asics is basically a specialized cpu for making a switching decision very quickly did you get me so this is a specialized cpu for making a switching decision very quickly it, it is uh, almost similar to the high end graphic card that has a special cpu for graphic processing that is why the name is called application specific integrated circuit application specific integrated circuit so because these multi layer switches they have this asics now please try to complete this activity it is in the in our uh, material so try to complete these are the answer so you can recap all the definition like the poe what is poe and devices electric power provided electrical power provided through the ethernet data cable so we call poe forwarding forwarding rate how fast the interface will process ethernet frame so these are the uh, like the port density so you need to complete this activity by yourself in a academy material okay it is available online all are you all are uh, already in my uh, scaling network class okay so packet tracer comparing 2960 and 3560 switches so this activity inshallah in my next video i will uh, make the video and uh, we will compare 2960 and 3560 switches and in this activity we will also compare the routing table of of the router as well as 3560 switch as well okay so we will compare two things in part one i will compare layer two and layer three switching and part two i will compare layer three switch and with the router so what is the difference so please just wait for the next uh, my video and i will make the video just to explain this activity okay so router requirement so router is required within a distribution layer of the enterprise network without routing packet could not leave the local area network so if if you need to connect with the isp if you need to connect with the outside of the network definitely you need a router routers are a critical network device because they are responsible for connecting the businesses and the home to the internet and it is also responsible the router is also responsible for interconnecting multiple sites within an enterprise network so connecting the isp isps on the internet and translating between the different media types and the protocol and finding alternative path of the link if goes down so Selecting a proper router on the router is important task for the network administrator in order to accommodate growing network. There are three categories of the router. So you have a branch router, then you have a network edge router and the service provider router. So you, do, you don't need to bother about the service provider network. It's a high end router. Okay. And typically these service provider router differentiate the service port, uh, portfolio and increase our revenue by delivering end-to-end -end scalable solution and subscribe uh, subscriber aware services so this is very high-ended uh, and just you need because we will focus on branch router so because if you are going to selecting a hardware so if you are designing a network for the campus so you need this different type of router so this is our like uh, if i will show you here so this is our uh, routers for the branch typically we are using 29 11 we can use uh, then we have 1841 so these are all 2901 so these are different type of routers you can use for your branch branch network okay 
Now go to the next slide, router hardware, it is almost the same. Okay, so you need to also complete this activity. What is the not uh, edge router, service provider router, branch router, and network edge router, service provider router. Okay, managing iOS files and licensing. So we have a complete full fledged one uh, chapter number 10, I think, yeah, chapter number 10 of scaling network. We will discuss in detail about the iOS files and licensing. For router, definitely you need to same like uh, in your PC. Without Windows operating system or any operating system, it is a dumb machine because it is nothing. So you cannot use it. Same like the router is nothing if you don't have the iOS. Okay, so uh, you have a different version of the Windows operating system, as we know. We uh, before there was a Windows XP, Windows 7, Windows 8. These days you have a window 10, same like this Microsoft window. So the Cisco also have the iOS is okay. So different version of iOS is so mainstream. It is called 15. Then the updated or upgraded version we call 15.1.1 T and all these things. So we will discuss these iOS is uh, version when if you are selecting or upgrading a Cisco iOS device, it is important to choose the proper iOS image with the correct feature set and version. So iOS, inshallah, we will discuss in detail in our chapter number 9 and 10. So now, what is in-band and out-of-band management? If you are talking about in-band or out-band management. There are two methods of connecting a PC to a network devices. Or if you are going to manage or monitor or configure some of the tasks, how you can configure or manage your network devices. So in-band management, as we know, is used to configure or monitor the device remotely. Okay. So remotely through SSH, through Telnet, or HTTP access. So you can access your uh, router through the, uh, you need to access your device remotely. Okay, how you can access by using a telnet, by using the SSH, this is called in-band router configuration. So you can configure your router by using uh, remote features, remote access feature. So what are the remote access features are available? Especially you have a telnet, then you have SSH and HTTP. Okay, HTTPS. So you can configure. And uh, also you can configure your router out of band management to the use of console cable. Okay, as suppose here uh, for the, if when the network connection is not available, then you can use a console cable. Suppose if you need to configure this one, how you can configure? Because here we can double click, but we cannot double click on the actual router. What we need to do? Then we need to add a console cable. Okay. So this is a console cable. Okay. So I will just use a console cable. I will just show you. So RS323. So this is a console. You can see here, this is a console cable. If you need, because I don't know the IP, there is no configuration. Nothing is all, uh, here. Even I don't have the network connection. So what I need to do, I just connect the, my console cable with my router, click it here and go to the desktop, go to the terminal and click it here. So it will just give you the connection with your router. Okay. So this is very simple and we can just move to the, so now you have inbound router configuration and out of band router configuration. In band, you can manage and configure and monitor your device remotely through Telnet, SSH, HTTP and out of band management, you can use a console cable and AUX port for initial configuration. So when you can use this one, when there is no network connections available, then you can use out of band router configuration. So these, this is a basic router uh, CLI command. Why we need the host name? Host name only we use for the identi identification purpose. So let me F5. Okay. okay. 
no let me okay now i think it is more visible now okay so uh, as shown in the figure uh, basic router configuration include as follows uh, host name for identification so why you need the host name host name r1 so for the identification of your router because suppose you have uh, in your college suppose you have a three different department business it engineering so and three different routers are because it is far apart so you have three different routers so one router you can because if it is connected with your business department you can say this is a business router we are so the host name better it should be a logical enough so we can easily identify this is a business router this is an engineering router and this is the it router okay so host name is basically used for the identification purpose password yes no one can access your router so you need to add the password assignment of the ip addresses to interface or the connectivity so you need to assign the ip addresses if you can see so each link you need to assign the ip addresses and then you need a basic router configuration as we already learned in our previous uh, ccna like cc network fundamental 1 2 and routing and switching you know how you can do the basic router configuration so if you need to save the configuration just you need to write copy running config startup config it will save the router configuration sometime suppose if you have the old uh, router and you need to erase the router configuration then you need to write this command erase startup configuration it will erase all the router configuration it will clear the router configuration then you need to reload and it will reload so now the basic router command if you will see show protocol command show ip root command show interface command these are the show command inshallah in the next activity i will run some of the command and i will show you what output it will uh, exhibit when you type this uh, command okay suppose if you are writing a show ip protocol so it will display the information about the routing for protocol configuration if you are writing a show ip route so it will display the detailed routing table information include routing code non network administrative distance matrix how the routers uh, how the routes were learned next hop static next hop address static routes and default route show interfaces it will show all the interfaces okay with the line status, bandwidth, delay, reliability, encapsulation, duplex, and input output statistics. So, we will see in our packet tracer activity how you can run these show command and what it will exhibit. Okay. So, this is all the show uh, command, show interface brief, and this is the purpose of this one. You can just read this one. Okay. And uh, this is the basic switch configuration, same host name, password for the switch. We need for the same purpose. And copy into in order to save the startup config, in order to save the uh, configuration, what you need to write, copy running config, startup config. If you want to erase, type this command and reload the router and it will erase all the configuration. So this is only show port security. It will display the port security and show port security addresses it will display secure mac addresses configured on the switch interfaces okay so when we will apply the port security i will show you how you can configure the port security and so how you can check the port security has been configured okay so now this is the summary and Please try to complete this packet tracer activity by yourself because uh, this uh, packet tracer activity requires you to practice many of the skills that you already acquired so far during your uh, network fundamental 1, 2 and routing and switching. So it is just a revision activity. So try to complete by yourself. If you have any ambiguity, please uh, send me the message or uh, write in the comment below. So I will also... Uh, solve and explain you in some of the videos okay so 
So the summary of chapter one is explain why it is important to design a scalable hierarchical network, and if you need to select the network devices, what feature you need to require, like the feature like the compatibility and the network requirement. So thanks for watching.